my question is like, I know how much time you must be spending on your Tesla factory. I know how much time you must be spending on SpaceX, and yet you still have time to dig holes under the ground in LA and come up with these ideas and then implement them. Like, I got a million ideas. I'm sure you do. There's no shortage of that. Yeah. I just don't know how you manage your time. I don't understand it. It doesn't seem, it doesn't even seem humanly possible. You know, I, I do basically, I think people like don't totally understand what I do with my time. They think like I'm a business guy or something like that. Um, like my Wikipedia page says business magnate. What would you call yourself? I'm a business magnet. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone please change my Wikipedia page to magnet? They'll change it right now. It's probably it already to, changed. It's locked. So somebody has oh. to be able to unlock it and change it to magnet. Someone will get I want that. to be a magnet. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I do engineering and you know and manufacturing and that kind of thing. That's like eighty percent more of my time. Ideas and then the implementation of those ideas. That's like hardcore engineering, like yeah, you know, designing things. You know, right? Structural, mechanical, electrical, software, uh, user interface, engineering, aerospace engineering. But you must understand there's not a whole lot of human beings like you. You know that, right? So you're an oddity. Seems, uh, yes. To m chimps like me. We're all chimps. Yeah, we are. We're one, yeah. notch, one notch above a chimp. Some of us are a little bit more confused. When I watch you doing all these things, I'm like, how does this motherfucker have all this time and all this energy and all these ideas, and then people just let him do these things? Because I'm an alien. That's what I've speculated. Yes. I, th I'm on record saying this in the past i wonder it's true I mean, if there was one i was like if there was like maybe an intelligent being that we created you know like some ai creature yeah. that's uh superior to people maybe it would just hang around with us for a little while like you've been doing and then fix a bunch of shit maybe that's the way i might have some <laughs> mutation or something like that you might do you think you do probably do you wonder like you're around normal people you're like hmm like, what's up with these boring, dumb motherfuckers? Ever? Not bad for a human, but I, I think we'll not be able to hold a candle to AI. Hmm. You scare the shit out of me when you talk about AI. Between you and Sam Harris. Oh, I didn't sure. even consider it until I had a podcast with Sam once. Sounds and great. He made me shit my pants. <laughs> I, talking about AI, I, I realized, like, oh, well, this is a genie that once it's out of the bottle, you're never getting it back in. That's true. There was a video that you tweeted about one of those Boston Dynamic robots. And yeah. you're like, in the future, it'll be moving so fast you can't see it without a strobe light. Yeah. You could probably do that right now. And no one's really uh, paying attention too much other than people like you or people that are really obsessed with technology. All these things in, are happening and these robots are... And did you see the one where P PETA uh, put out a statement that you shouldn't kick robots? Probably not wise. <laughs> For retribution. Their, their memory is very good. I bet it's really good. It's really good. I bet it is. Yes. And getting better every day. It's really good. Are you honestly legitimately concerned about this? Are you Is like AI one of your main worries in regards to the future? It, yes. It, it's less of a worry than it used to be, uh, mostly due to taking more of a fatalistic attitude. Hmm. So you used to have more hope, and you gave up some of it, and now you don't worry as much about AI. You're like, this is just what it is. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, hmm. yes. yes no, not, it's, it's, but no, uh, it's not necessarily bad. It's just, it's definitely going to be outside of human control. Not necessarily bad, right? Yeah, it's not. It's not necessarily bad. It's just, it's just outside of human control. Now, the thing that's going to be tricky here is that it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting. In fact, it will be used as a weapon. Um, so the the on, the the on ramp to serious AI. The danger is going to be more humans using it against each other, I think, most likely. That'll be the danger. Yeah.
How far do you think we are from something that can make its own mind up, whether or not something's ethically or morally correct, or whether or not it wants to do something, or whether or not it wants to improve itself, or whether or not it, it wants to protect itself from people or from other AI? How far away are we some, from something that's really, truly sentient? Well, I mean, you could argue that any group of people... Like, like a, a company is essentially a, a cybernetic collective of people and machines. That's what a company is. And then there are different, there's different levels of complexity in the way these companies are formed. And then there are sort of, there's this sort of like a collective AI in in the Google sort of search, Google search, you know, the where we're all sort of plugged in as like like nodes on the network, like leaves on a big tree, all f and we're all we're all feeding this network with our questions and answers. We're all collectively programming the AI, and the, the and Google plus the all the humans that connect to it are one giant cybernetic collective. This is also true of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these social networks. They're giant cybernetic collectives. It Humans and electronics all interfacing and constantly now, constantly connected. Yes, constantly. One of the things that I've been thinking about a lot over the last few years is that one of the, th the things that drives a lot of people crazy is how how many people are obsessed with materialism and getting the latest, greatest thing? And I wonder how much of that is, well, a lot of it is most certainly fueling technology and innovation. And it almost seems like it's built into us. It's like what we like and what we want, that we're fueling this thing that's constantly around us all the time. And it doesn't seem possible that people are going to pump the brakes. It doesn't seem possible at this stage where we're constantly expecting the newest cell phone, the latest Tesla update, the newest MacBook Pro. We're, we're, everything has to be newer and better. And that's going to lead to some e incredible point. And it, it seems like it's built into us. It almost seems like it's a, an instinct that we, we're working towards this, that we like it. Mm -hmm. That Our job, just like the ants build the ant hill, our job is to somehow or another fuel this. Yes. Um I mean, when I made those comments some, some years ago, but it feels like we are the biological bootloader for AI, effectively. We are building it. And then we're building progressively greater intelligence. And the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. But the, the AI is informed, strangely, by the human limbic system. It, it is, in large part, our id writ large. How so? Well, you mentioned all those things, the sort of primal drives. Mm -hmm. um, there's all, all the things that we like and hate and fear. They're all there on the internet. They're, they're a projection of our limbic system. <laughs> it's true. It, no, it makes sense. And the thinking of it as a, I mean, think of thinking of corporations and just thinking of just human beings communicating online through these social media networks as some sort of an organism that's a, it's a cyborg. It's a, it's a combination. It's a combination of electronics and biology. Yeah. This is in, in some in some measure like it's the, the success of these online systems is the is a is sort of a function of of how much limbic resonance they're able to achieve with people. The more limbic resonance, the more engagement. Mm. Whereas like one of the reasons why probably Instagram is more enticing than Twitter. Limbic resonance. Yeah. You get more images, more video. Yes. It's tweaking your system more. Yes. 
Do you worry about, or wonder, in fact, about what the next step is? I mean, a lot of people didn't see Twitter coming that, you know, communicating with 140 characters or 280 now would be a thing that people would be interested in. Like, it's going to excel, it's going to become more connected to us, right? Yes, things are getting more and more connected. They're, at this point, constrained by bandwidth. Our input output is slow, particularly output. Output got worse with thumbs. You know, we used to have input with 10, 10 fingers, now we have thumbs. But I images are just are also are there a way of communicating at high bandwidth. You take pictures and you send pictures to people. That sends that's that communicates far more information than you can communicate with your thumbs. So what happened with you where you decided or you be, took on a more fatalistic attitude? Like what was there any specific thing or was it just the inevitability of our future? I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are going to fucking take over and you're freaking me out. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. No one. Are people more inclined to listen today? It seems like an issue that's brought up more often over the last few years than it was maybe five, ten years ago. It seemed like science fiction. Maybe they will. So far, they haven't. I think people don't, like, the, normally the way that regulations work is very slow. It's very slow indeed. So, usually there'll be something, some new technology. It will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee. There will be rulemaking. Then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. This is the normal course of things. If you look at, say, automotive regulations, how long did it take for seat belts to be, to be implemented, to be required? You know, the auto industry fought seat belts, I think, for more than a decade, successfully fought any regulations on seat belts, even though the numbers were extremely obvious. If you had a seat belt on, you would be far less likely to die or be seriously injured. It was unequivocal. And the industry fought this for years successfully. Eventually, after many, many people died, regulators insisted on seat belts. Oof. This is a. This time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take ten years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. And you feel like this is decades away or years away from being too late. If you have this fatalistic attitude, and you yeah. feel like it's going, we're in a almost like a doomsday countdown. It's not necessarily a doomsday countdown. It's it's a out of control countdown. Out of control. Yeah, people call it the singularity, and uh, that's that's probably a good way to think about it. It's it's a singularity. It's hard to predict, like a black hole. What what happens past the event horizon? Right. It's so once it's implemented, it's very different because it it will once be the able to out of the bottle. What's right. going to happen? And it will be able to improve itself. Pro yes. That's where it gets spooky, right? The idea that it can do thousands of years of innovation very, very quickly. Yeah. And then we'll be just ridiculous. Ridiculous. We will be like this ridiculous biological shitting, pissing thing trying to stop the gods. No, stop. We like, we like living with a finite lifespan and, and watching you know, Norman Rockwell paintings. It could be terrible and it could be great. It's not clear. Right. But one thing is... For sure, we will not control it. Do you think that it's likely that we will merge somehow or another with this sort of technology and it'll augment what we are now? Or do you think it will s replace us? Well, that's the scenario. The, the, the merge scenario with AI is 
the one that seems like probably the best like for if, us yes like if you if you can't beat it join it <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah you know um so from a long-term existential standpoint that's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI because we have a bandwidth problem you just can't communicate through your fingers it's too slow and where's Neuralink at right now I think we'll have something interesting to announce in a few months that's at least an order of magnitude better than anything else Probably, I think better than probably anyone thinks is possible. How much can you talk about that right now? I don't want to jump the gun on that. Um, but what's like the ultimate, what's what's the idea behind it? Like what are you trying to accomplish with it? Like what would you like, best case scenario? I think best case scenario, we effectively merge with AI uh, where we, AI serves as a tertiary cognition layer uh, where we've got the limbic system, um, kind of the you know, primitive brain, essentially. You've got the cortex. So you're, you're currently in a symbiotic relationship. Your, your cortex and limbic system are in a symbiotic relationship. And generally, people like their cortex, and they like their limbic system. I haven't met anyone who wants to delete their limbic system or delete their cortex. Everybody seems to like both. And the cortex is mostly in service to the limbic system. People may think that... That, that, their, that the thinking part of themselves is in charge, but it's mostly their limbic system that's in charge. And the cortex is trying to make the limbic system happy. That's what most of that computing power is oriented towards. How can I make the limbic system happy? That's what it's trying to do. Now, if, if we do have a third layer, which is the AI extension of yourself, that is also symbiotic. Um, and there's enough bandwidth between the cortex and the AI extension of yourself such that the AI doesn't de, de facto separate, then that could be a good outcome. That could be quite a positive outcome for the future. So instead of replacing us, it will radically change our capabilities. Yes. It will, it will enable anyone who wants to have superhuman Cognition. Anyone who wants. This is not a matter of earning power because your earning power would be vastly greater after you do it. So it's just like anyone who wants can just do it in theory. That's the theory. And, and if that's the case, then, and let's say billions of people do it, then the outcome for humanity will be the sum of of human will, the sum of billions of people's desire for the future. And but that, that billions could be a, of people with enhanced cognitive ability, radically yes, enhanced. Yes. And th which would be, it, how much different than people today? Like if you if you had to explain it to a, a person who didn't really know, understand what you were saying, like how much different are you talking about? When you say radically improved, like what do you mean? You mean mind reading? It would be difficult, it would be difficult to, to really appreciate the, dif the difference. Um, you know, it's kind of like how much smarter are you with a phone or computer than without? It's, you're vastly smarter, actually. You know, you can answer any question. If you're, if you're connected to the Internet, you can answer any question pretty much instantly, any calculation. Uh, the, the, your phone's memory is essentially perfect. Uh, you can remember flawlessly. Your phone can remember videos, pictures, any, everything perfectly. Uh, that's the, that, your phone is already an extension of you. You're already a cyborg. You don't even, well, most people don't realize they are already a cyborg. It, that phone is an extension of yourself. It's just that the, the data rate, the rate at which of the communication rate between you and the cybernetic extension of yourself that is your phone and computer is slow. It's very slow. And, and that, that, that's like a tiny straw 
of, of, of information flow between your biological self and your digital self. And we need to make that tiny straw like a giant river, huge, high bandwidth interface. It's an interface problem, data rate problem. You solve the data rate problem, then I think, I think we can hang on to human machine symbiosis through the long term. And then people may decide that they want to retain their biological self or not. I think they'll probably choose to retain their bi biological self. Versus some sort of Ray Kurzweil scenario where they download themselves into a computer? You will be essentially snapshotted into a computer at any time. If your biological self dies, you could just probably just upload into a new unit. Literally. Pass that whiskey. <laughs> This is, we're getting crazy over here. This is getting <laughs> ridiculous. Can Down the rabbit that? hole. Grab that sucker. Give me some of that. <laughs> this is too freaky. See, if I've I was been thinking about this for a long friend, time, by the way. I believe you have. If I was talking to one of my... Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Yeah, this is a great whiskey. Thank you. I know where this came from. Who brought this to us? I'm trying to remember. I Somebody can't. gave it yeah, to us. Yeah. Old Camp, whoever it was. Thanks. It's good. Yeah, it is good. Um... This is just inevitable. Again, going back to your when you decided to be, have this fatalistic viewpoint. So you warn, you tried to warn people. You talked about this pretty extensively. I've read several interviews mm -hmm. where you talked about this, and then you just sort of just said, "Okay, it just is." Well, let's just and you, in a way, you're by communicating the, the potential fear. I mean, it, for sure, you're you're getting the warning out to some people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was really going on. The warning quite quite a lot. I was warning everyone I could. You ever met with Obama and just for one reason, like just to watch talk out. about AI. Yes. And what did he say? He said, "What about Hillary? <laughs> Worry about her first. <laughs> Shh, everybody be quiet." No, he he listened. <laughs> he certainly listened. Um, I met with Congress. I met with. I, I was at a meeting of all fifty governors and talked about just AI danger, and I talked to everyone I could. No one seemed to realize where this was going. Is it that, or do they just assume that someone smarter than them is already taking care of it? Because when, when people hear about something like AI, it's almost abstract. It's almost, it's almost like it's so, it's so hard to wrap your head around it. it By is. the time it already happens, it'll be too late. Yeah, I think they didn't quite understand it or didn't think it was near term or not sure what to do about it. And I said, like, you know, an obvious thing to do is to just establish a, a committee, government committee, to gain insight, you know, before before you do oversight, before you do make regulations, you should, like, try to understand what's going on. Um, and then if you have a insight committee then the once they learn what's going on get up to speed then they can make maybe some rules or propose some rules and and that would be probably a safer way to go about things it seems i mean i, I know that it's probably something that the government's supposed to handle but it seems like i wouldn't want the i don't want the government to handle this who do you want to handle i want it? you to handle this. oh geez yeah i feel like you're the one who could ring the bell better because if, if Mike Pence starts talking about AI, I'm like, shut up, bitch. You don't know anything about AI. Come on, man. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He yeah, but I don't demons. have the power to regulate other companies. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to? I, like, right. Like, but maybe know. companies could agree. Maybe there could be some huh. sort of a – I mean, there's – we have agreements where you're not supposed to dump toxic waste into the ocean. You're not supposed to do certain things that could be terribly damaging even though they'd be profitable. Maybe this is one of those things. Maybe we should realize that you can't hit the switch on something that's going to be able to think for itself and make up its own mind as to whether or not it wants to survive or not and whether or not it thinks you're a threat and whether or not it thinks you're useless. Like, why do I keep this dumb, finite life form alive? Why, why keep this thing around? It's just stupid. It just keeps polluting everything and shitting <laughs> everywhere it goes, lighting everything on fire and shooting each other. Why would I keep this stupid thing alive? Because sometimes it makes good music. You know, sometimes it makes great movies, sometimes it makes beautiful art, and sometimes it, you know, sometimes it's cool to hang out with. 
Like yes, might, all those reasons. Yeah, for us, those are great reasons. Yes. But for anything objective, standing outside, like, oh, this is definitely a flawed system. 